go from there. Now, notice there's a war. Jesus fought. He won. He comes back. And then he stands before his disciples in Matthew 28. So you can go to Matthew 28, verse 18. And it says, and Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, all power, all authority, all right to govern, as we learned this week, is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now, remember what he said about his disciples? He said, behold, I give unto you power. Okay. Here it says all authority. When he said, I give unto you power, he said, I give, I give unto you authority. Here it says, all authority is given unto me in heaven and earth. Now, do you believe that? But now notice, in, there in, in uh, well, in Luke, he actually tells us, too, that he gave us authority. So here he said he has all authority, and then he said, of course, he gave us authority. So that means that in, now in his all authority, now the authority we're walking in now is his all authority. Now, understand, if he didn't give you authority, if we can't believe that, why can we believe that he has all authority? See, if we're going to believe he has all authority, then we have to believe that he has given us authority. And the authority he has given us is his authority because he didn't say, go do these things. He said, go do these things in my name. And in my name means in my authority. In other words, because remember whenever the Pharisees came to him and said, by whose authority, by what authority do you do these things? And he said, I'll ask you, you know, whose authority was John's uh, baptism? Was it from man or from God? And so, remember, they said, well, we can't tell because they were afraid of the people. And he said, well, I'm not going to tell you either. But now notice there, when, when he said that, that authority, he didn't say a little bit of authority. He said, in my authority, in my name. That, what that means is, because somebody's going to ask you. And that's what he was getting at right there. He said, you know, they, they ask him by whose authority. So guess what? However they treat the master, they're going to treat the disciple. At some point, they're going to say, well, who gave you authority? Well, what do you think the question is today when people say, well, what makes you think that you can heal them? I mean, come on, healing passed away, power passed away, all this passed away. What makes you think you can do this? What are they saying? But what authority are you doing? What, what gave you the authority to think that you can actually lay hands on the sick and they'll recover? Well, it's because Jesus said it. Isn't it right? And it was the power behind his name that brings it to pass. So he didn't give us a little bit. He gave us his authority. See, if you go in a person's name, you go in their authority. So you have to realize that whatever authority he exercised, and especially now since he has been seated at the right hand of the Father, now he has all authority. Now the authority you walk in is unlimited, or let me say it this way, is only limited by the degree that you actually walk in. So it's not a matter of, oh, God, give me more. God, give me more power. Give me more authority. Give me more that. No. It's already been given. All right. But now notice, that question is going to be asked you. By whose authority? By what authority? Do you do that? What makes you think you can do this? Now, they'll ask it in different ways. But the bottom line is, it's because he gave us that name and we're doing these things in his name. So it's by that authority. But it's not, the authority isn't based on you. The authority you walk in is not based on you, technically speaking. Now, you can have some things to do with it, but it is based on him. So it's his all authority that you're going in. So whatever he could do, if you're doing it in his name for him in his stead, then you can do whatever he would do if he were there in the flesh by himself standing there. Does that make sense? Because he is standing there in the flesh in you. Amen? Amen. So you can do that thing. So the authority, when somebody says, well, what makes you think this? Or, oh, that stuff's passed away. No. Jesus never rescinded. You never see any place where he rescinded his power. And none of that stuff in there. And it's amazing. People want to take really one verse you know, that Paul said, and they want to apply it to everything. And it wasn't even applying to the thing that they were trying to make it apply to. And whenever he said, you know, when the perfect comes, all, you know, tongues will fail or tongues will cease and all this kind of stuff. But he wasn't even talking about it because people say, well, that perfect thing is the Bible. And when the Bible is come, we don't need that anymore. Let me tell you, we need the power of God more today than they did back then. Yes, Do you understand it? Why? Because there's more hurting people, more sick people, more unsaved people. And if they needed it then, we need it today. Amen. 
<clears throat> and so when people say, well, when the perfect comes, all that, about, well, when that perfect comes, that's the completion. That word perfect is teleosis. And it literally means the completion or the fullness of everything. In other, in other words, when everything gets wrapped up, guess what? When you're in heaven, I ain't going to need a gift of healing. I ain't going to need tongues. I ain't going to need interpretation of tongues. Why? Because you're going to have it all together then. Matter of fact, we don't even know if we're going to be talking then. We might be answering each other, thinking it and answering it and thinking. Amen? And so we, not, we don't even need those kind of things at that point. So where do we need them? Here. And if they needed them, we need them. Why? Because we got just as many devils today as they did back then. And see, whenever the apostles left, guess what? All those demons, they didn't leave. You get that? And it makes no sense for Jesus to come along, even by himself, with his 12, with his 70, and even with the other guy who don't even know his name that was out there casting out devils. It makes no sense for that, those people, that, all those groups, to have power over the devil and to be able to just smack him around, beat him up constantly, and then Jesus go, okay, well, that's over. Now you just got one mad devil and a whole bunch of mad demons, right? And they're like, oh, great. Well, the Christians don't have power anymore. Let's go get them. So that makes no sense for somebody to slap them around, make them mad, and then they leave, and they leave them for somebody else that doesn't have a defense. Now think about that. That just absolutely makes no sense whatsoever. And the one thing God is, is he makes perfect sense. So perfect sometimes that people that are smart can't figure it out. Okay? especially the religiously trained. <laughs> so, now, <clears throat> so, we see here, he says in Matthew 28, 18, Jesus came, spoke to them, saying, all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore. What does that mean? Go in my authority. Go in my all authority. And teach, disciple, make disciples. What is a disciple? A pupil, a student. It actually means to enroll a person in a course of study. Literally, it's what it means. <clears throat> Disciple all nations, all ethnic groups, okay? Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them. Now, that word teaching is different than the word up there where it says teach all nations. The word teaching here is the didaskos, and it means to instruct specifically, not to enroll as a student, but once a student's enrolled, instruct them. And it says, instructing them to observe, to know, and to do all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. So be it. 